I'm going to talk about the doctrine of double effect, another doctrine that is commonly applied by those who uphold the sanctity of life ethic um, and uh, by some other ethicists as well. So it goes like this. It's permissible to act in ways that will lead to the deaths of innocents, provided, firstly, that this occurs as a side effect of what you're trying to do, of the act which you're directly aiming at or intending. Secondly, the act that you're aiming at in or intending is itself morally good, or at least morally neutral. Thirdly, the good effect is not achieved by way of the bad, that is, the bad must not be a means to the good. And finally, the bad consequences must not be so serious as to outweigh the good effect. So this is a bit abstract. Maybe you say, what kind of, what kind of things are we talking about here anyway? Well, um, one case in which this doctrine was applied was, suppose you have a pregnant woman who um, develops a cancer of the uterus. Now, and, and suppose that this happens at a point when the fetus is much too premature, much too immature to survive outside the womb. And suppose it's also the case that the cancer is developing and the only hope of saving the woman's life is to remove the uterus. Of course, if you remove the uterus, it has a fetus in it. The fetus is going to die, the uh, immature fetus. But looked at it in terms of, of these principles, we can say, well, yes, an innocent is going to die here. That is, the, the, the fetus is innocent and is going to die. Um, but this is a side effect of what we're trying to achieve. What we're trying to achieve is the removal of a cancer, the removal of a, a cancerous organ, because the cancer otherwise will develop and kill the patient, the woman. So we're not aiming at the death of the fetus. We're aiming at saving the woman's life or removing the uterus. Um, that's a morally good act, come to be now. That's a morally good act um, to save the woman's life by removing the cancer. And we don't achieve this good effect by way of the bad. The bad is not a means to the good. Killing the fetus is not the means to saving the woman's life. It is a side effect of it. It's, a, it's an unintended side effect of it. If we could remove the uterus and somehow leave the fetus in there to grow and develop, we would. But of course you can't, it's impossible. And the bad consequences must not be so serious as to outweigh the good effect. Well, in this case, you have lives in the balance, the woman's life, the life of the fetus. You could say at least the death of the fetus is not so bad as to outweigh the good effect of saving the woman's life. So this doctrine seems to justify that and in that kind of case seems quite reasonable. So um, that's this kind of case that I've uh, just talked about. The doctor doesn't directly kill the fetus. But now look at a second case where um, this used to happen. So I say here at the bottom, um, I'm talking here about a situation that fortunately no longer prevails medically. We've developed other medical techniques to avoid this problem, but it used to happen. It used to certainly happen in the 19th century and early in the 20th century. So in this case, a woman is in labor, she's giving birth, but something happens during the birth process and the fetus about to be born gets in a position where it obstructs the vagina, cannot move um, and cannot be dislodged in uh, the normal way by the, the midwife or the doctor. So if this situation continues, then eventually both the fetus and the woman will die, a double tragedy. So um, the way to resolve this problem, the medically accepted way of resolving this problem, was to perform an operation called a craniotomy, which essentially involves taking um, forceps and crushing the skull of the baby because it's the skull, the largest part, which is blocking the vagina here. And then the 